So it's been a few days since the entire internet exploded with Nobra's return, trending everywhere, trending worldwide. You could not escape the leaks and spoilers. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody was saying she's back or Nobra's back. And I'm probably going to do that for my title. I'm going to be completely blunt. But the point of the matter is, is that you could not escape the overall just like leaks and spoilers of Nobra. Everybody has done it on pretty much every portion of the internet at this point, and I feel like anyone that's even an anime only has probably been spoiled to some degree. But, um, getting into that, I finally sat down and I read the latest chapter, chapter 267, and FYI, at the current time period with this chapter coming out, that means that there is only four chapters left of the manga. So basically, this is the fifth chapter and then four chapters left. So, even if, like, you know, there's a break, it doesn't change the fact that there's only four chapters left, and it's crazy to think that JJK legitimately is wrapping up. And this chapter, the conclusion of this chapter, pretty much does set up the fact that, uh, you know, Sukuna, he's probably going to get defeated. Like, this is, this is the end for him. He takes a massive, like, punch by Yuji, a black flash in the chest. You see the man gasping with this panel here, like, here, I'll literally zoom it in. You see this man gasping for air, and it's just, like, in it... It does imply that this is the end of Sukuna, and Yuji obviously locking in with this face here, saying, like, your curse must end. Really nice line. I really like this line from Yuji, honestly, and it's a, it's a pretty enjoyable chapter. Now, honestly, it does feel like, like, after everything, after the gauntlet that Sukuna has put the entire cast through, killing so many of our fan favorite characters, you know, it feels like, wow, that's it? That's really the end of Sukuna? Like, this is truly the final blow that will bring him down? And, you know, I know there's going to be a lot of debate around that. Maybe it feels too soon or not. But to be fair, this man has been taking nonstop hits for about, oh man... 40 chapters at this point, it's, it's been a long time. Like, this man has been just non-stop taking blows. And so, it's about time the man probably finally just backs down and falls down. Because it's like, to be fair, at the at this current point before these previous chapters, you know, Sukuna almost seemed nigh invincible. So, I do think that him going down is rather fitting. Now, there is a few things I want to talk about. And that is the fact that Nobra's revival or being brought back into the story is something that I talked about when I discussed the leaks a few days ago, and in the video and even with the title, I said I was not a big fan of it, and I still gonna be blunt. My opinion is slightly different now that the official chapter is out, but I still don't like the usage of Nobra at this current time period, and I'm gonna discuss that. I'll explain. Don't flame me yet in the comments. Let me explain. Basically, I like Nobra. Uh, she is easily one of my favorite female characters in recent shonen, besides the MC of Undead Unluck. She's a great female character. I like her. And the reason why many were upset with Nobra's potential death to Mahito over 150 chapters ago was because there was so much potential to her character. Now, to be fair, that scene with her, you know, with her eye basically exploded by Mahito, it did lead into character development for Yuji, which really pushed his character forward. And even in recent chapters before this obvious revival of Nobra, you know, Yuji currently, or did believe that, you know, Nobra was dead, and that was it. Like, she was gone. He truly believed that. I mean, we had a whole segment of a chapter dedicated to basically all the characters that have passed away, and you saw Nobra in one of those panels. So Yuji truly believed that Nobra was actually dead for all this time, and it really pushed his character. And so, in a way, you know, her death did lead into a lot of development for Yuji as a character, which was great, and it showcased the cruelty and the dark nature of JJK's environment, that no matter how you go or how, how far you push yourself, you know, your life could end like that. It's over. And, you know, Mahito proved that. It, it kind of led to Yuji's anger and aggression towards curses, why he took down Mahito like he did, and led to Yuji's current character state and all that. And I think, you know, Nobra's death was a very big moment. But at the same time, in those chapters, it was never straight up admitted that Nobra was dead. And I'm gonna pull up that moment. So basically, you have this moment here, which is highlighted. I didn't do this highlighting, someone else did, but it, it is still relevant. Basically, this is the moment to when, um, 
Mahito took out Nobra, and you had it to where Nobra was on the ground, looked like she was unconscious or dead, but it was stated here, you can literally see it, that it's not a 0% chance that she, you know, will survive, you know, there is a percentage, even if it is a 0.1% chance, Nobra could live from this, and so it was always up in the air since it really never was dived into ever again if Nobra was alive or not. The only follow-up we ever got of this situation situation was of this page right here. Now, this bottom bubble is edited. This isn't exactly what Yuji says, but it is relevant. Basically, in this moment, you have, like, Yuji confronting Megami a while back. It, it, it was not that long ago, but I would say about 40 or so chapters ago, maybe 50. But, you know, Yuji confronts Megami and is like, hey, you know, uh, what happened, you know, to Nobra? And obviously from the reaction that Megami gives, it's implied that she is dead. Now, he's never, he never directly says anything. He doesn't say anything whatsoever. But it is implied in this moment that Megami is saying, yes, she is gone. She is dead. And Yuji accepts this. He really realizes that it's it and you know the point of the matter was is that was the last time we really got anything else besides that brief little manga panel scene showcasing Nobra alongside of all the other deceased characters so at this current point the hope of Nobra potentially returning was pretty much dashed especially since we were getting closer and closer to the ending and as I said at this current time with the release of the latest chapter you know there's only four chapters left so when the five chapters left got announced people were like wow I guess Nobra is really dead well Gegi Akutami came in and was like nope she's alive and here you go she appears in this chapter and hits Sukuna and he takes a lot of damage which opens him up for Yuji to be able to do Black Flash. Now regardless if you think that Nobra being alive or not is an ass pool or whatever, Nobra has always been a counter. She has definitely always been set up to do massive damage to Sukuna especially in the state that he's currently in with possessing Megami's body so it, it makes sense like why Nobra's attacks are working. Anyone that thinks that it shouldn't Obviously doesn't understand her character, doesn't understand her curse technique, doesn't understand what ability she has. It makes sense for her to do damage to Sukuna. And it's one of the big reasons why many assume she wasn't coming back, but because she was the honestly the perfect counter to this entire situation with, you know, Sukuna, everybody fighting Sukuna. Now, one thing I want to point out before we even saw Nobra alive in this chapter, it is stated that she hasn't even been awake for an hour yet, less than an hour, so obviously we can estimate maybe 40 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 50 minutes, we don't know, but she has definitely been awake less than an hour. It's confirmed by official translations, and this is a page right before we see her strike the finger of Sukuna. So, basically, Nobra legitimately, if Gojo would have postponed that fight by a few hours, maybe two to three hours for Nobra to awaken, everybody would survive. Like, Gojo would be alive, Yuta would theoretically be alive, every character that has died against Sukuna would theoretically be alive if Nobra would have woken up in time or if they would have just literally waited a few more hours. And it's just like, wow, that's, that's kind of it's kind of messed up, legitimately messed up, but uh, one of the big things is, is that, um, let's talk about this. Obviously, I've outlined the fact that her being able to do damage to Sukuna and everything makes perfect sense, but we need to now talk about the bad, which is why I did not like the leaks that came out, and that is the fact, yes, I can understand the fact that Gegi Akutami never, you know, certainly said that she was dead. He never said it. But, and this is a big but, she was straight up pushed aside as a character for 150 plus chapters. Now, even if she was confirmed dead or not, bringing her back in the last five chapters, I think, is more or less gaggy like, I need to figure out a way to defeat Sukuna, so let's bring Nobra back. And she is a bona fide plot device in this moment that that is literally what she is regardless if her doing damage to him makes sense she has been turned into a plot device and there is not enough time to really develop her character to get more closure with her character because there's there's not enough chapters left 
it's got to focus on all the other stuff going on with Sukuna and everything else and how the world's going to react and everything. So it, there's not a lot of time to dedicate to Nobara's story, especially since Yuji is our MC and we definitely got to have spotlight on that. We got to have closure to whatever's going on with Hikari. We got to have stuff with Gojo, the, the JJK world, the like sorcery itself, you know, everything, you know, the damage that Kenjaku made. There's just not enough time. There's not enough time to dedicate to Nobara's character, which is my big issue I have, is that if Nobra theoretically would have been brought back maybe 15 chapters ago, I would not be having this complaint. I think majority of people that have complaints with this chapter, I truly think would not be complaining. At all. If it was like 15, 20 chapters ago. But because she was brought back in the last five chapters is why people have complaints. And why I actually kind of have an issue with it as well. It's not the fact she's back. It's the fact she came back so late within the story. That it's very clear that Gagi brought her back as a plot device. That's all I'm going to say. You can feel free to disagree with me, but that is definitely what it feels like at the very least. And because there is obviously a huge chunk of the community that feels that way... It, it, that is definitely an issue. Like, regardless if, you know, Gaggy's intention wasn't to make her a plot device, the community does feel that way. Anyways, getting into the next main point, all I'm gonna say is, is that, you know, I am curious to see how Gaggy handles the upcoming chapters, because honestly, I, I am excited to see how Yuji reacts to everything, you know, finding out that Nobra is, you know, alive and seeing how he reacts to it. But one question does come into mind when I think about this interaction. And that is, obviously, we know why Yuji didn't know about Nobara's survivability. Like, why she was alive. We know why. It's because, obviously, Sukuna could have found out by reading, you know, Yuji's memories. Figuring out, basically, what Yuji was going to do. Or what Nobara was going to do if, you know, she woke up. And so, obviously, they withheld information from Yuji for Sukuna would not find out. And... Obviously, that makes sense, but the problem here where this all comes apart and this, like, element of discussion just crumbles is that Sukuna possessed Megami's body, and pulling up this, like, page here, it's implied that Megami knows or doesn't know the state of Nobra, so we can assume in this moment that he doesn't know. And that doesn't make sense. It legitimately doesn't make sense for Megami not to know, because... At this point in time within the story, besides Gagi Akutami, nobody knew, especially the characters, in story, the characters had no idea that Sukuna was going to break away from Yuji and possess Megami's body. It made no sense for anyone to withhold information from Megami of all people. It does not make sense to withhold Nobra's being survi like surviving. It does make sense to withhold it maybe from Yuji, but even then that still doesn't make any sense because at the current time period, nobody believed that Sukuna was going to separate from Yuji. So even still, even if we disregard the Megami stuff, it doesn't make sense to withhold this from Yuji as well, especially since it's like, they didn't think this would happen with Sukuna. So, yeah, y you get my point. So, that is another big problem I personally have with the whole segment, is that if we're going along the lines of Sukuna being able to read Yuji's memories, he should have been able to read Megami's. But it doesn't make sense for them to withhold that from Megami, because we never had a hint that they're withholding information from him. So, you get my point. So, yeah, I'll leave it at that. That is my discussion of the chapter. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and I love you guys. Chibi out.